Discord on the cloud. Okay, we should be recording right now. So I'll get started. So hi, everybody. Welcome to the Jenkins um, in Google Summer of Code webinar. Um, this is for Google Summer of Code 2023. So this webinar is to help address the question, how do I get started with Jenkins in GSOC? So hopefully by the end of this um, session, it will have helped you, um, you know, get started, figure out how to get started, what to expect, and so on. So my name is Alyssa Tong, and I'm an org admin for GSOC. Um, along on this webinar with me are Jean-Marc Mason, also an org admin. Uh, Bruno is also, Bruno Varakton, sorry, Bruno, is also org admin. Chris Stern is our org admin as well as a mentor. And then Mark Waite is uh, a mentor for GSOC. So um, next slide, please. Yes, thank you. So um, some housekeeping notes. So we are recording this session and I'll make the recording available within Discourse and Gitter sometime later today. So for Q&A, feel free to put it into the chat window. We will answer them as we go along. And if we have time at the end of the webinar, we will open it up to um, Q&A as well. So for questions that, you know, that may come up after the event, feel free to um, put it into the Gitter or discourse channel, and then we will get to them, um, you know, as we as we see them. And of course, the code of conduct applies here as well. So basically, what it means is be kind to one another. So next okay. slide, John Mark. So this is what we're going to talk about. You can quickly go through it, uh, Alyssa. Yeah. Uh, so in this session, we will cover what it means to participate in GSOC. And as I mentioned earlier, what you could expect and what is expected of you. Um, we'll quickly go over what is GSOC, Jenkins and GSOC, and some important timeline that you need to um, remember and stick with because Google Summer of Code, they're very adamant about sticking with the date that was, that's been given. And we do the same as well. So we have to follow those dates and those deadlines. And then, as I mentioned, like before, um, Q&A will open it up at the end. Um, but if you have questions during our presentation, just feel free to put it into the chat window and one of the org admins or mentors will um, answer them. Great. So, well, welcome everybody joining the call or listening it uh, after uh, this uh, live session. And basically, so you want to participate in Google Summer of Code short GSOC. Well, that's a good idea. And it's a great decision that you're making. So with this adventure, uh, you will learn a lot on technical fields, about open source, and you will do that while being coached by uh, by people. So it's a great way to learn and get experience. Uh, it's also an incredible opportunity to have an impact by your work, which you can have with open source very easily. But uh, here you have really a, a great opportunity that your work will be useful and will change something. Participating to Google Summer of Code is also a nice way to uh, get some pocket money. So Google has big pockets and uh, they want to teach people and to promote uh, the ways of open source and, and, uh, and open source. And we're very thankful for them to sponsor these kind of events and Participating to it is a nice way to get some money and who knows, buy yourself a new laptop or whatever you need for your, your studies or for your starting career. And talking about career, participating to Google Summer of Code is also a great way uh, to add a prestigious uh, line in your, in your resume. So there are many, many reasons 
why people are interested to participate uh, in GSOC. So what is GSOC in a nutshell? GSOC is this. It's a great adventure. You will see great things. You will do great things together. Uh, and it, this picture for me really uh, summarizes everything. You will get to places where you didn't think that you would get to. And uh, like uh, Alpine, uh, uh, Alpine Adventures or in Ima Himalaya uh, for people um, uh, in India, <laughs> which is there, this can only be achieved as a team together. Uh, generally, you have a guide that brings you to explore these incredible sceneries and participate to these adventures. There are pitfalls. It's not always sunny as on these pictures. It's tough. You'll have to walk. Sometimes the feel will hurt, the feet will hurt, it will be cold, damp. And this is part of the adventure. This is why people like mountain climbing. I want to warn uh, everybody that wants to participate to, uh, to Google Summer of Code. Uh, the Jenkins uh, uh, team uh, has only a limited or a finite coaching capacity uh, for Google Summer of Code. That means that there are only a limited number of slots available. Uh, and not everybody will be selected. So the selection process is already part of the schooling of the adventure. It's a first big hurdle uh, to, uh, to win. So only the strongest proposal will be selected. And uh, on, on the criteria, what are the, uh, the projects that are the more likely to be successful uh, that will have the best contribu and useful contribution to the Jenkins project and the best return of mentoring and investment? So we need to find an, uh, um, a balance in all that. The other important thing is that you need to know this is a long and important effort. Uh, it starts with a proposal. It will take several weeks. You need to be involved. You need to do your, your, your work uh, there. It's exactly like climb, climbing a summit. <laughs> it takes a lot of effort uh, to get there. And you need to get prepared uh, for that. And this is... Uh, uh, the, the, the presentation we have now and the kind of advice that uh, I would like to, to share with you. In order to reach the summits that we've seen in previous uh, 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 pictures, where you prepare, you, you, you get in shape, you lose an extra kilos, which I sh maybe should do myself uh, to do that. Uh, you build muscles. You build your technical expertise in order to do that. And then there will be the selection uh, process for that. So a couple of words, what is GSOC? How does it work? Uh, where, what, where is the front? Where's the tail? And where, where, does, it, uh, where does it start? So the first important thing to do is um, read the available documentation. There are a lot of explanations uh, around. Don't hesitate to read it once or twice and then ask the questions uh, how to do. Uh, we built over the years, it's the seventh year that we're participating to that uh, initiative and very proudly. Uh, we build up a lot of references, useful references for uh, uh, contributors. Uh, in the word contributor means uh, in the new definition of the program before it was limited only to students, people that were uh, graduates or uh, 
uh, doing a master uh, somewhere. Now it's also uh, open for young professionals. Um, so this is where the word contributors. Have a look to the projects that were presented last year. Look how they were documented, listen to the presentations. They succeeded. It worked uh, with them. In, get inspiration, learn from uh, the people that were uh, uh, before, before you. Uh, Google has also some very good pages and good uh, readings uh, on how it goes, what is a project idea, what is the role of mentors, what is expected. A lot of documentation. Take the time to read it and we'll have other opportunities uh, during the process where we can discuss together and where uh, we're available to answer questions. The only thing we would like is that you have read and you know the theory uh, of the, the program. So how does it work? So we're currently in the, in the very initial uh, uh, phase. Uh, Google announced a couple of weeks ago, yes, we're going to do uh, Google Summer of Code 2023. So very initial and we're starting. This is the moment where you can build, if you're interested to participate with the Jenkins community in Google Summer of Code, you can build your Jenkins muscle. Uh, how do you do that? Uh, you do that by understanding the Jenkins product, experimenting, reading, uh, start your own Jenkins instance, and Chris will give you some, some tips and, and advices afterwards. But you also learn how the, the ecosystem works, how the community, how do we communicate? And there is one strong point I want to make available or uh, 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 you aware of, I'm sorry, uh, is that the purpose of the initiative of Google is to learn how open source works. It's different of how companies work. They, they, they have a lot of things that, that are shared, but open source has one principle that you need to remember, is that everything is done in the open, you share. That means that uh, um, when you're going to work on an idea, when you're going to work on your code, you're not going to do it in your corner, in your den somewhere and only show it at the end of the process. Here, the process is that all, everything that you're going to do, everything that you're going to, uh, to build, that you're going to learn, is written down somewhere, shared, that everybody in the community, there are many time zones uh, involved, there are different skills involved, but everything is open. So you're going to write and uh, prepare a project proposal. All that is done in the open and you ask the community, what do you think of that idea? Nobody has, has a comment about that. Okay, then we go on. But at least you have described your idea and you requested for comment. And so I'll come back later uh, in the explanation. So this is how the community works. Read, listen, observe how it works. The principle of pull requests. Get your hands dirty with, uh, with that. So this is something that, and this is now the right moment in December and January to learn these kind of things. Nothing to really worry about, nothing really with deadlines or so you can enjoy the end of uh, the, the, the end of year period, depending on the region of the world where, where you are, festivals are different. January, February, uh, you're going to start studying more deeply and choosing a project idea. So project ideas are currently being built, discussed, 
uh, and are um, available for, uh, for review. Start reading them, start understanding them. So I'm just going to switch quickly. No, this is not what I wanted to do there. Um, there it is. So this is the Jenkins IO um, uh, website is the main Jenkins. And uh, you go in sub projects, Google Summer of Code in Jenkins. This is the main page of our project, of our initiative, where you have a lot of explanation. This is the GSOC homepage for, for uh, and we'll update it regularly. This is where you have a direction to all the, uh, all the various documentations. This is the section that you should uh, uh, look for uh, and, and start reading. We have some dedicated guidelines, good readings, a couple of books also that are uh, mentioned on the, Google, uh, on the Google portal. Have a look there. And you can look, for instance, uh, uh, everything that's available here, what the, the communication channels are, uh, office hours are going to, to talk later. These are here, the current lists of projects uh, we're working on. Uh, just walk here. So the first status of project ideas are the ones being discussed. That means somebody woke up in the morning suddenly and I have an idea. And he writes it down, people discuss, ask, but what do you mean? What would be the outcome and so on? And so it starts to crystallize. Currently, we don't have any uh, projects anymore that are in this very early uh, stage. These are the projects uh, that are in draft mode. These are ideas. We have a rough idea what it could be. Not all have mentors uh, uh, assigned uh, to. When you click here uh, uh, on it, uh, which one can I uh, can I take? Well, I'm going to take this one here. So you have uh, details on what is the background, what are the skills required, uh, what is the difficulty, what are the outcomes, uh, and, and a lot of lot of details. This is the first stage. Study them. Uh, and try to understand it. We're going to organize in the second half of January, uh, one or several sessions where the mentors uh, will present each project idea in more detail. And uh, you will be able to ask questions uh, and uh, no, what, what do you mean? I understand it that way. Is it in line? I have this novel idea. Everything is done in the open. Everybody hears the same. So there's, uh, we discourage any one-to-one -one discussion uh, during the whole process. Uh, so uh, you can already start to look so you know what to, uh, what to explore, what are, so you can focus your, your learning uh, process. So um, this is what's going to happen uh, the first part of the year, January and February. In March, February and March, this is where you have chosen a project and you're going to build your proposal. Now we're going to do something at that moment very unnatural, especially unnatural compared to what you've been taught at school. Also, the first principle at school, you don't cheat. You don't look what your neighbor is doing and you, you don't, and you protect your work that somebody is not going to cheat on you. Well, this is not the way we work. Uh, it's the common effort that will make the product and the world better by working together and sharing all the ideas. You may start an idea 
and somebody at a certain point will add ideas to yours and yours will get better or somebody else will come and will compete with yours and add other things and and will and with at, at the end we're going to decide well which one is the strongest idea which has a, the best chances to reach the goals that we want to achieve with the program so that means that we very strongly encourage you to publish your drafts and make them available to everybody meaning that the mentors are going to read your drafts and going to ask questions here i don't understand this what do you really intend to do uh, to do there uh, uh, can you can you uh, make that more precise the community that means that all the, the, the all the people that are either users or contributing to Jenkins will also uh, uh, ask questions or tell you here, this has been proven to be a, a, a bad solution. This You're going to burn your fingers with that. Try this method or try this goal uh, uh, and, uh, or, or these kind of things. So it will be a very weird process for you, but believe me, uh, it's a very rich process, uh, and it will make your draft, your proposal, stronger. Yes, somebody can come and pick your idea. It may be uh, uh, faster than you, and but it's it's part of the game. So you need to be the best. You need to learn, and we're there to help you. And we're there to help everybody the same the same way. So there is a little bit of uh, uh, what's what's the English word for that, but natural selection of idea. It's tough, but this is the way it works, and this is why we don't want to privilege this person or that person by giving him insight. And so this is something you really need to to understand. We're going to. To explain that uh, that further, further, so we'll organize regularly during that period uh, what we call office hour or hours. Uh, that means that we're going to organize a, a meeting every week. Uh, we're trying to look to have the correct time zone uh, to have it friendly for the uh, the biggest. Uh, for the majority of the participants, I see from the names here that it will be more on the Asian side. Uh, but we'll organize a meeting. That meeting is just well, here, I'm there. And uh, what are your questions? What are your concerns? What are your doubts? Uh, how can we advise you to move uh, to move ahead? And this will be the backbone for you to progress and move along on this uh, uh, on this adventure and in learning how to move ahead. So we're, we'll be available. Mentors will be there. Org admins will be there uh, to, uh, to help you. April 4th is the moment where the dice, the dice are rolling. This is where you have, you must have submitted your proposal. So this is the goal of the first stretch of your GSOC adventure. Uh, why do I say the dice are uh, the dice are rolling? Uh, it's because you have no influence anymore. You've done all your work. You put your heart in it, uh, and um, now you need to wait. What will happen in that period is that. Uh, the org admin and mentors will read in details all your proposals, will reflect on them, and will rank them. And uh, will build a proposal uh, with a number of slots that we're requesting from Google uh, and uh, providing them evidence of what is the, uh, the coaching capacity we have. And so Google 
and our organization will come with a proposal and say, these are the number of slots that we request. These are the projects that we want to, uh, to run this year. And these are the people we select in these uh, projects. And uh, this will be announced May 4th. And this is where it really starts. So all that is a preparation for, and you will realize there's a lot of work involved uh, uh, to get uh, up to there. From, the, from May 4th, uh, I, I, this is far, but in a nutshell, what will happen is that during a period you will, we call it the bonding period. I, I, I find it a funny word, but you will first learn to know your mentors uh, and the mentors will, will learn who you are, how you work. You will set up uh, a work, uh, a, a work framework. How are you going to work together? You're going to work out the architecture, what you're going to, uh, to do. Uh, so set up the frame, the framework. And then about mid-May, well, it, it depends because we, we have an elapsed period for the complete uh, uh, period. Then the actual work will start and how it's done will really depend from project and mentor teams and, uh, uh, and how you get organized will also depend uh, on your holidays or if you have uh, midterm exams uh, or, or this is then left to the freedom uh, of uh, every project. The org admins will be there like a fatherly fa figure saying that every go everything goes well and that no fighting and, and that we get the goals uh, uh, achieved. Uh, there are two milestones, two important milestones that you need to know, but we'll give details later is that somewhere during the summer, we're going to do a midterm presentation and evaluation. Where did you reach? What did you achieve? What are the things that you can show and brag about? And then somewhere in September, uh, we'll have the end terminate uh, um, the end uh, presentations and also presentation of the deliverables, uh, and we'll do a wrap up. So this is the timeline. I realize I have been in a lot of details and I've eaten a lot of time. So I'm, I apologize for that. So I wanted uh, I went to, to, to give enough details about that. Uh, now to the more technical part. And I give the word to uh, Chris, if you can give more details on the technical part and how to build the Jenkins muscle. Okay, sure. So um, I'm going to talk a bit about the tech stack we're using at Jenkins. So most of the projects are in Java, some in Kotlin, um, and for website, it's mostly in JavaScript, it says as in Ruby. Uh, some projects have been in Bash. So it all depends on the requirements. And for the web development of Jenkins.io, which is a project idea we have for this year, for our main website, we use ASCII doll. This year, many project ideas involve proof of concept and documentation, such as um, the website revamp I just talked about, and also some Android and OS projects. Many of the projects involve tooling or development tools, so it's a good idea to read up on these and um, do some research and make a good post on us later on. Next page. Okay, so how to prepare. First thing first, which is to do research on the project idea you're interested in. Um, that's important because like you need to have a context and uh, we don't normally give out too much about the context. So you have to uh, be original and be able to come up with some solid ideas about what it's necessary to, um, to make a successful project. And two, do ask intended questions on IRC, such as Gitter. 
um this is because like um it will help us to differentiate like uh to to tell like who is more likely to be able to successfully complete the projects and we'll choose the contributors accordingly and three interact with the community so um don't just think that it's um all about what we saw that a, a large part of the application has to do with the interaction as well so do um do engage yourself with like um any conversations you might find interesting or you might find relevant to your project idea and for development proposal with the community so uh, like jean marc just said uh develop the proposal with us so ask questions share your proposal um polish it with us if you have any doubts or questions do ask five show us what you can do by submitting pull requests patches fixes impactful contributions so um i think i've heard from some other organizations that they do consider pull requests as a must before they can um, accept an application. So, but I don't think that's the case for Jenkins, but uh, we do appreciate any pull requests submitted um, as part of the application process. It's Next. a good sign for success, a good indication for success. If... Yeah, yeah, true. Okay. So next, so dates to remember. Um, remember to check Google's program timeline, which is adding to given uh and to adhere to it because like we have very 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 strict timelines and we don't normally like um give grace periods even if you have very legitimate reasons to be late for something so gsoc contributes the application period begins on march 20th at 6 p.m utc so that's um I think that's about March 21st, Indian time or Asian time. And GSOC contributor application deadline is on April 4th, same 6 p.m. UTC. So that's April 5th, Asia time. Accepted GSOC contributor projects will be announced on May 4th, same time, 6 p.m. UTC. So don't be late, be on time and be prepared. That's important. Um, I'm going to pick up here, uh, Chris, or uh, and, and you can jump in uh, afterwards. Here are some resources. At this point, I just would like to pull into the conversation uh, last year's uh, participants. So we have uh, Hoshi Cash, if I can see uh, correctly. I'm not monitoring chat, so I hope. So, Hoshikash, um, quickly, well, not quickly, but take your time, but um, what would you like to share with uh, this year's candidate uh, for GSOC? So, the first question is, uh, what did GSOC bring to you as an experience? uh and what worked well and you would have done better uh if you had known or or what is your experience so can you share a little bit your uh, your experience of last year so uh yeah so i feel communication is a key for a successful project Initially, I was a very shy person, you know, I, I didn't know what kind of questions to ask. I was worried what people would think about me uh, if I asked some silly questions. Uh, I was very anxious to share my ideas. Uh, I didn't know where to get started. The Jenkins code base is really big. Uh, there are so many files, you don't know where to get started. But Jenkins community did make it, you know, easy for us. Uh, it was a very comfortable journey. Uh, the I I didn't know how those three months pass, you know just passed. Uh, but then it was a very smooth journey. Uh, I did face a lot of challenges, but in the end, yeah. Uh, you have to just get started, explore the code base, be very active in the community. Uh, 
uh, and take the help of all the people in the community to create a very strong proposal. That's that sound. Well, thank you for your your uh, comments and, and advice, Rurikesh. And it it comes also to my my experience uh, in having you uh, having seen you uh, travel on these paths and your your climb on the mountain and reach the summits. Uh, uh, one of the key elements is how do you communicate? How do you efficiently ask questions how do you explain what you intend to do to ask for uh, advice uh, direction or um, it's it's like mountain climbing i don't know if you're familiar with it for me it's it it, it tells us something in order to reach that you need to communicate with your teammates uh, you need to explain what you want to do and, and ask for feedback. So this is key. It's a hurdle. Uh, and Hoshi Cash had some, some issues in the beginning. It was, I remember, uh, uh, very shy in the beginning. And who am I to dare ask to, uh, to people like Mark Waits or, or these, uh, these knowledgeable people? I'm just, a, no. You're an important person. You come with your experience. You come with your heart uh, in that uh, that adventure. You're worth that. That we as a community community take the time to help you. But we need to get that discussion going. We need to get that. So this is the most important uh, uh, advice. Efficient communication. Don't assume that the person you're talking to is sitting near your desk and sees what is your on, on screen. It doesn't work. Uh, what doesn't work or what did you intend to do? What are you trying to do? See, these kind of things, don't assume. It, it, this, is, this is what I feel a very most important lesson in this complete adventure in one of the keystones of uh, of open source. So thank you, Rakesh, to have stressed that point. And uh, now I've eaten uh, most of uh, the time uh, here because we're now listening to your, your question. And so you can practice the first lesson being don't be shy. Ask questions, we're there to help you. The first question was from Aditya, if I pronounce it correctly. Uh, it was, can I contribute on these draft project ideas from now? Yes. Yes. Um, yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> so I think that Mark, may, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Mark, how can we do that at this stage? Uh, so there are two there are different ways to contribute, and then I will I will uh, uh, give the the word to Mark, who has, has his own experience. And then maybe Chris uh, can chime in. Um, the first way to contribute, uh, clarify, uh, is to submit a pull request on the project proposal, uh, uh, and this will be then reviewed by the team. This is not the most efficient way to do it. Uh, if you have lightweight ideas, questions, queries, uh, you can use community.jenkins.io, which is the discourse where you can start here. I, did, I don't understand this, this, work, this word. Where should I look for? Uh, but nothing refrains you to uh, really start giving structure. And if you have ideas, you can really start contributing uh, on the idea for that. Create um, uh, a Google Doc uh, document. So we're sponsored by Google. So everything uses Google, Google tools, uh, which work well uh, for, for, for that purpose. Uh, create a Google Doc a document. 
uh, good idea to use the template uh, that's available. Generally, these kind of contribution, these kind of working uh, is done in a later phase because now they're, the project ideas are still very fuzzy. But here, if you already understood it and you come with novel ideas in it, go for it. You've seen what Mark, uh, Mark uh, reaction uh, on that. So to summarize, uh, can we, yes, 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 three or four times yes, how, uh, discuss on community or Gitter, but community is, is better uh, for, for that. Uh, you can update uh, the proposal that's on uh, Jenkins.io, submit a pull request, uh, and even uh, start creating uh, your document, make it public, and announce it on the Google channel on uh, community.jenkins.io. Mark, was I, do you have things to add? Uh, or do you have other advice or? or... No, I, th I, th I think you did great. The, the, the answer for me is, can you contribute to project ideas? Absolutely. You can do it by getting involved in conversations on Gitter chat. You can do it by getting involved in conversations on community.jenkins.io. You can do it by getting involved in conversations on the Jenkins developer mailing list. You can get involved with a project idea in the advanced way that John Mark said of submitting pull requests to the project idea to, to propose refinement for it. I think that's that for me is a later stage, but just being involved in the conversations about this idea, helping clarify, because inevitably, if you have a question about a project idea that's listed there, others have the same question and they're too timid to ask. So you be the bold one, you ask the question and ex accept that people will give you an answer. Chris, do you want to add something? Well, Hushikash, anyone? I had one, one point I wanted to ask. Oh, don't, uh, I wanted to like, you know, just add, don't get, dejected if your question is unanswered immediately okay it it takes time for uh, you know the community uh to you know answer your questions but i'm pretty sure someone or the other will answer your question yeah that's very wise and very true uh, uh comment thank you for for sharing that yeah we're working around uh around the, the clock around the, on different times on mark yeah, so so we sleep. That, that's a very good. Yeah. It's a very good point that we sleep, and I actually sleep at different times that other people sleep at. India is almost twelve hours away from me, right? And therefore, the time of day for you, for Hrushikesh, for instance, is usually exactly opposite from my time on the planet. Welcome to a worldwide project, and the complexities that come with being in a worldwide project. One of them is. We're not always awake. The other is many of us have jobs in addition to being to being contributors, and we want to be sure that we do all the things. So ask your questions. Also, don't be shy if if it takes a while to answer your question to refresh it. Hey, did anyone have this? Uh, can anyone help me? Sometimes a question that's asked is challenging enough that it actually requires some research from us and from one of the people who would respond. And that research, maybe non-trivial. So if you ask a really hard question, be extra patient because sometimes really hard questions require really good investigation. Well, we also have the holidays that's uh, that's approaching. So expect yeah. some delay there as well. Very good comment, yeah. Thank you. Are there other questions? Uh, Mark, so, can people turn unmute themselves to ask questions or is it? If, if they'd prefer to ask questions verbally, they certainly can. Uh, they've, they've been given the permission to unmute themselves. Vandit, let's, let's take Udit's question first. He says he usually takes four or five hours of research and development in starting on an issue. Should he be speeding things up? Um, None of us are worried about how fast or slow you proceed. Truly, none of us are worried about your pace. 
that's up to you what time you have available and what you can do. So work at a speed that's comfortable to you. I spend a lot of time in debuggers. I spend a lot of time writing automated tests. I spend a lot of time interactive testing, none of which is actually writing new source code. And that's okay. Vandit had the question, if he gets st stuck somewhere while working on a patch, is it silly to ask for a review? Not only is it not silly, it's encouraged, highly encouraged. The best form of ask a question is usually submit a pull request with your idea of how you think you're going to do it that shows you've done the work to make your pull request compile, that you've understood enough to think about the tests for it, and you've submitted it. Now, it may be that you say, hey, I'm submitting this with a failing test. I don't know how to make this test work. That's okay. Great. That's a good way to ask a question because I can look at the source code or others, Bruno or John Mark can look at the source code or Chris can look at the source code and say, hey, your source code's making this mistake. That's a much easier answer than, oh, it broke. <laughs> if it broke is all you tell us, we're going to say, well, fix it. And that's not not helpful to you and not helpful to us. Okay, I think there's one more question is from Pranav. Um, it's um, what kind of PRs should I submit? Should they be good first issues or some advanced issues? I, I like that question. So submit a pull request. It can be either a good first issue or something more advanced. Whatever whatever helps you build okay. the skill. What John Mark described it as is building, developing your muscles for contribution. And part of that is you develop a skill, the skill to phrase your pull requests well, to understand what the expectations are from reviewers as you submit a pull request. Oh, you didn't, you, you ignored the checklist. No, don't ignore checklists. Oh, you forgot to add tests. No, don't, don't forget to add tests. Please add tests. It's good work to add tests. Uh, oh, you forgot to interactively test it. And I'll be sure you test interactively. Those are all part of the process of submitting good pull requests. Yep. And, and there's building skills you can muscle. develop. Oh, go ahead, yep. John Mark. Right, no, it's building your muscle. It is building the skills and it's a way of working. And, and just remember, if you're still studying, these skills will be very useful to you when you start your working career. So it's a great opportunity, even in the selection process. Everything that you learned in the selection process will be useful for you in your, uh, in your studies and a future uh, working uh, career. So it's worthwhile to do. And if you're not selected next year, will be there and you make a, a stronger a proposal because you, you've learned a lot of things. So it's worthwhile to invest, even if you believe that you don't have a chance, which I personally don't believe. Uh, so. Speaking of selection, Jean-Marc, Sorab is asking on which basis do you select students? Oh, uh, now, to be honest, it depends on where the moon is standing, what is the height of the water, and uh, so that's not true. So I'm making a joke. So the selection process uh, uses several uh, criterias, and uh, if I remember well, these were written down last year. I will make sure that we have guidelines for that. Uh, in a nutshell, the uh, and I'll go back to where um, uh, I, I wrote it down. So here, only strongest proposal will be selected. Which are the projects that have the best chances, project and uh, 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 contributor have a best chance of having a successful uh, outcome? Uh, uh, that means that you've shown that you have the communication skills, that you understood the problem, that you're able to explain uh, what you want uh, to do, uh, and uh, that you've shown that you have the right stuff to bring it to the end, because we have three months to do that. I'm sure and convinced that everybody will succeed. 
It's only that some people will need more time and more help to do that, and others it will be quicker. We need to select, so it's, it's, it's competitive. Other criteria is, is the project useful uh, to the Jenkins project, to the Jenkins community? Because you can come with your own project idea. We've been selective. We, we worked out some proposals for you to work on. These are, these are good. These are useful. Um, but some are more useful than, uh, than others. Uh, for instance, uh, well, no, I'm not going to, to give hints uh, uh, there. But uh, try to put yourself at, um, uh, at the place of, of users of the community. Oh, that, that will be useful for people. Uh, and this is how I will make it more useful. So don't forget to, to explain that. Third criteria is, uh, and there we will be uh, assessing uh, your skills as a contributor, where will we have the best return on the mentoring investment? If we have two equivalent projects uh, and two equivalent proposals, um, if one project will require an involvement uh, of the mentors of, let's say, uh, 10 or 15 hours a week, and on the other side, we have uh, a contributor uh, who we assume that he's uh, self-sufficient, that he knows, so we don't need to explain, for instance, what is a unit test, or, or uh, he can solve simple problems, uh, will prefer uh, uh, to select uh, this uh, contributor because we'll, we then, with the mentorship uh, 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 capital that we have, we can go further and, and go farther in the uh, uh, in the project. Did I answer the question? Well, I think so. <laughs> um, some people were also asking about building the Jenkins muscle, and Mark's suggestion was to use uh, improve a plugin tutorial for Jenkins plugin. And I still have lots of things to learn about Jenkins, but this part helped me quite a lot. And there was a previous suggestion from Mark, which is go ahead and try Jenkins on your own. Use Jenkins to build a project that would be useful for you. That's what I do on a daily basis to progress on my knowledge of Jenkins. So yes, go ahead with the improve um, a plugin tutorial, install Jenkins on whatever machine you have, be it um, your laptop, Mac, uh, Windows, Raspberry Pi, um, whatever, uh, even the Oracle free tier, it works just about everywhere. Um, yeah. So go ahead and try that so that you will build the two kinds of muscles, <laughs> the muscles for improved plugin tutorial and the muscles of um, using Jenkins on a daily basis. Yeah. So to, to give more weight to what Bruno was describing, I, have, I like the concept of healthy self-interest. Healthy self-interest in this case is a way of saying, do something that is interesting to you and use Jenkins to help you do it. So if you have an assignment at university that is write some Java program or write some C-sharp program or write some Python or some, some Node.js, whatever, um, you've got some assignment. Install a Jenkins controller and let it help you build that thing. You learn. It helps a little bit, and you've now used what you already know. Oh, I knew how to build this project for university work or for school work or for whatever. And you learn something about Jenkins in the process. That exercise of using Jenkins to do something that matters to you helps you and will help prepare you to contribute to Jenkins. Yeah. Um. Well, I've, I'm, I just opened the chat. I've seen a question from Udit about joining this course and together. Uh, I agree with uh, Bruno, uh, but they're complementary. So there are two uh, uh, different ways. So you don't have to, but it's it's good to have an, a foot in, in both. So it depends how much time uh, you have. Are there other questions? I see there have been quite some activity in the uh, 
uh, in the chat. So don't be shy. So while you're thinking and fumbling to find the unmute uh, button, I, I see that Nitish has unmuted himself. You have a question? So either Nitish has a communication problem. Hi, everyone. So, okay, Vandit, go I, ahead. I wanted to ask, uh, I wanted to ask if I'm not on the Discord channel, should I need to join because I'm only on the Gitter channel uh, because I find it more active and easy to use. Do I have to join the Discord one too? Um, as I said, well, good question. So thank you, uh, Vandit. They're complementary. Uh, there are different ways uh, of communicating. Uh, I would recommend the following. So uh, connect and register to this course. So the community.jenkins.io. Uh, there are interesting uh, announcements that are made there. Connect to it. Look if it works for you. If it doesn't work for you, just leave it alone. So, and, and you continue using Gitter. Did that answer your question? Yes, Mark. Uh, yes, uh, yes, Jean Mark. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Well, here, I have the same problem pronouncing correctly first name. I hope at the end of this GSOC adventure to learn, or I need to come to, to India and have a crash course in uh, pronouncing first words. I need to. Yes, I'll, I'll be eagerly waiting for it. <laughs> this is what I fear. It's uh, too many things to discover over there. Don't tempt me. Great. Are there other questions? I want to be respectful on people's time. It's probably already late uh, in hi, India. And hi, Go hi. ahead, you did. Uh, hi. I had a question. I want to know that uh, since we have different time zones, so I was thinking if I if I want to ask a question on Jitter, should I ask them is like around this time, like what the current time is going on or should I later on in my morning? So currently I'm working a professional right now. So I have time generally in the morning or late in late in midnight, around midnight. Literally. So I can work and ask my questions during this time, around this time or after eight to, uh, seven to eight hours. So when you guys will be able to answer my questions early, right? If I ask my questions right now around this time or after six to seven hours. <laughs> I love your question. It's a great question. So the short answer to that, experiment how it works and what works better. What you, the, the problem the exposed here is a typical, problem of when working on open source and also in a professional career when you're working in big companies. Uh, and uh, one of the purpose of this here is to learn asynchronous communication. The whole communication process is key. Different ways to communicate. One is synchronous. This is what we have now. We have a meeting but you have to stay late in the evening or people like Alyssa need to wake to wake up in unruly times very early for her uh, or, or it, it, I need to work uh, and so, but you can exchange a lot of information synchronously in a meeting or in a chat where you have uh, uh, immediate interaction and where you have rewards. On the other side, uh, you will have different type of answers and very often better answers if you really go into the asynchronous uh, way of working. It has other requirements, but you reach a bigger crowd of people that way. That means that you're going to reflect on how you ask your question and you're going to receive an answer several uh, hours afterwards. So, it's really about mastering the different communication uh, channels. Now, 
to be precise in answering your your question before giving the the word back to you uh, with it um the majority of interactions here is asynchronous uh and and mark emphasis uh, and Alyssa have emphasized that in the period we're getting in uh i'll be visiting my grandchildren um will be off that means that uh, uh will we will not be able physically to reply immediately because either we're sleeping or I will be playing with the, uh, with the kids or and, and I need to sneak out to to get a laptop to uh, to to answer uh, you so we'll enter these kind of of periods where uh, uh, this um but in your project uh, once it's starting uh, to be efficient having synchronous communication moments will be useful so you really need to learn and master uh, the two ways of communicating and depending and we'll make the two types available to you did that answer your question with it yes sir. i got it now <laughs> i won't be thinking much of it should i answer uh, un uh, should I question put the question on Gator in, uh, in my night my night at my time or in the morning? Because generally you might you guys also might be having holidays, so it won't guarantee an answer to me. I'll take care of it and I'll also make sure to master both the ways of communication as you say. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Here, try it out. You will learn. You will learn how it how it goes. And uh, but don't expect uh, an immediate uh, answer is Hoshi Cash also uh, uh, mentioned that uh, um, uh, it, if you don't get an answer immediately, it's not because your um, your question is useless or stupid. Uh, just leave uh, let time uh, to to answer the asynchronous uh, way of doing. Are there other questions? We're two minutes overboard, but. Uh... Alisa is going to frown at me and say I talk too much. But <laughs> well, I think we, we have time for one more question, Alisa. Sure. Okay, one last more uh, last question. Oh, then we we answered all. So I will leave a couple of seconds. Mike, uh, open. Hi, John. Uh, sorry for Go ahead. Uh, is there anything specific we need to know about Jenkins Jira? anything different because i use jira in my in my professional environment i know how it works but is there anything different to know or is it Ooh. yeah just explore it try it people will okay. kindly kindly say oh you shouldn't do it that way not all all the features are available uh on it it's it's not a super duper version it's it's free it's donated so we don't have all the gadgets uh on it so mark do you want to add something to that so if you Udi, if you need to submit a, an issue report please review the how to report an issue instructions that are on jenkins.io yeah. uh, one of, if you have a bug report and it is inadequately described you're doing yourself and the maintainers who might view your bug report a disservice so, but that's that's the same that you get in any use of, of any bug tracker, right? Write good bug reports. Um, the permissions are generally pretty pretty open on the Jenkins Jira, and it's intentionally so. So you can make comments anywhere. You can assign bugs to yourself at any time. You just need an account. Once you've logged in, you can assign things and you can work on them. Don't be shy about doing that. If and don't be ashamed at a shy about unassigning it if you decided I don't want to work on that anymore. It's okay. Okay. Thanks a lot, Mom. Thanks a lot, Jim. Okay. John. So uh, we'll slowly have to wrap up. So uh, I'm personally very happy to meet you and and to start this journey uh, together with all of you. Remember. I will, I'm sorry to be terse there. I will not answer requests to do one-on-one -on -one, uh, 
uh, discussion. There is only one um, uh, exception to that. I explain it another time. It's not the purpose uh, here. So I will not accept these. Ask your questions publicly so that everybody can learn from your question and you will learn from the questions that others are asking. The next step now is uh, good good luck and bon courage. I don't know how you say that in English, but uh, be uh, be strong in building your Jenkins uh, muscle, and we'll organize another uh, interactive, synchronous uh, meeting uh, somewhere in the middle of January, where we'll go more in details. Uh, on um, uh, the project ideas, give explanations and answer any questions uh, on them. Uh, stay tuned on Gitter and on, on the GSOC channel on Gitter and uh, on, um, uh, not Confluence, on um, community.jenkins.io and Twitter. Uh, for announcement when when this will happen. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you very much for your interest, uh, your questions. I'm thrilled, as probably most of the org admins, to uh, to see you here and to be part of the, uh, that adventure. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. So we we can end the call uh, here, I believe. Yeah. Thanks, Jean Marc. Thanks, everybody, for participating. Thank you. Bye bye, everybody.